Hello and welcome back. So today we're doing a different type of video, one that was spawned in the comments section of one of my recent videos. And in that video, I casually remarked that I think Fiala is due for a regression this year. And one of my subscribers, Beta Human, replied with the counterpoint saying basically, Fiala was underutilized on the power play in Minnesota. He spent a lot of time with Freddie Goudreau as his center. He'll definitely get an upgrade playing with Kopitar. And he suggested that Fiala is due to hit 90 points this year. Uh, and a ton of shots. I don't necessarily want to spend this whole video refuting those claims, partially because some of that is definitely the truth, but this player has an absolutely fascinating data file and it's definitely worth a look, so I thought I'd bring that to you guys as well. Um, this is his uh, five-year analysis, so this is the last five seasons. You can look at, at this. Um, this is the, you you know, some of the, the categories aren't at the top here, but I can explain it to you. Games played, goals, Goals per game, assists, assists per game, total points, point per game, five-year average, last year's uh, point per game average, plus minus, and then on and on and on. Um, what I want you to pay attention to here, first things first, uh, Fiala is scoring at a 30-goal pace. So every one of the last three seasons, he's been above a 30-goal pace. Um, so these are shortened seasons. That's why he didn't hit 30 goals, but that's a 30-goal pace over an 82-game season. Uh, so he is a goal scoring winger, and that is a little bit more valuable uh, when you're term you know, determining positional value in your fantasy league. Um, so that could be something to keep in mind. Um, I'm not 100% sure if he has dual position eligibility or if he will this season, because I know they've been tweaking that a little bit, and I'm not 100% sure if he does have that this year. But regardless, he's a 30 goal scoring winger, or uh, yeah, left winger. Um, he did have over a point per game average last year. Um, but he significantly overproduced his five-year average. Now, uh, that five-year average does have some of those earlier seasons in his career. He's a relatively young player, um, so that might have been while he was still establishing himself. So it's not necessarily make or break that his five-year average is 0.75, but he did significantly overproduce last year compared to that. Um, now, as we look at this data, we can deduce that Fiala is best for your fantasy team in goals because he's at a 30 goal pace at shots. He's above a three shot per game pace. The last two seasons, 3.24, 3.195. Uh, and usually power play production as well. If you notice here, 0.28 and a 0.28, that's 1920 and 2021. Um, and then a 0.21 last year, but he had 17 power play points in 82 games. That's reasonable. That's not great, but it's reasonable. Um, and so that that comment about him not getting a lot of power play time, that might be true, but he still did kind of produce on the power play. That point three number is what I like to, to come back to. That's a 20 goal or 20 power play point pace if you're at that point three number. And he's right around that. So uh, he is ownable for power play production. He may not drive your power play production on your team but he's not irrelevant for the, the power play production there as well. He had uh, 17 points last year, 14 the year before, and 18 the year before that. So he does produce on the power play, um, and he will probably get more of a role on the power play uh, playing for L.A. as opposed to Minnesota, and we'll come back to that later. Um, but what you won't get out of Fiala, you won't get elite assist production. You won't get hits or blocks. Um, you are getting a 30 goal pace and a 0.8 ish average point per game, but there are likely similar candidates deep in the draft. So should you even draft Fiala? Let me lay out the case here. So in the second half analysis video that I did a couple days ago, I did mention that Kevin Fiala was maybe the quintessential second half player. And I told you to trust me, but now I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So first half Kevin Fiala last year. 38 games, 11 goals, 18 assists, 29 points, 0.76 point per game average. That's not terrible. That is fantasy relevant, um, but he was only scoring at a 23 goal pace over 82 games, not the 30 goal pace that he was at. Um, uh, not anything to write home about, but then second half Fiala, and remember this analysis was done for that video, so the second half is uh, the exact midpoint for the league not necessarily the exact midpoint in Fiala's season. Uh, but in that second half, Fiala is a borderline first or second round pick given his point per game basis. You can see that 1.27 point per game average, 22 goals, 34 assists, 56 points in 44 games. That is 
Uh, if you look at it by a points basis, that was 10th in the league in the second half of the season last year. If you look at it from a point per game basis, because you do notice he did play 44 games in that back section of the season, um, he's 20th on a point per game basis, which is still basically a second round pick. If you were, you know, if you started your fantasy draft at the middle of the season, he would probably be a second round pick. Um, so that's how good he is in the second half of the season. But it's also, you know, I don't want to say that this is bad, but it's not good that this is his production in the first half. So, you know, if you're, if you're uh, trying to think about, you know, whether or not you should draft him, keep all of this type of stuff in mind because second half Fiala scores at a 0.5 goal per game pace, which is above a 40 goal pace over an 82 game season. But first half Fiala scores at a 0.29 goal per game pace. So that's not anything close to that. In fact, that's below uh, a 30 goal pace. So he's almost, I don't want to say he's almost double, but he's he's in that, that realm of possibility where he's almost doubling his goal per game rate uh, from first half to second half. And he actually did double the amount of goals. So he had 11 in the first half and 22 in the second half. That's exactly double, obviously, for those uh, math majors out there. His assists per game went from 0.47 in the first half to 0.77 in the second half, a massive jump. Um, and then 10 of his 17 power play points came in the second half of the season as well. And he did all of this primarily with Matt Boldy and Freddie Gaudreau on the third line. Um, but it is interesting to note he didn't always get third line minutes. They tended to fluctuate depending on how Fiala played, how that line played, and what the team needed. So during that back half of the season, there were times where he saw as high as 24 minutes a game. And then there were games where he was as low as 13.55. So he was in a very wide range in terms of ice time. And that probably will change in L.A. And I think that's what um, my subscriber was talking about in terms of getting an opportunity. But it's not like he was only getting third line minutes playing in Minnesota because they had a dominant third line and then they would often just keep throwing them out there and, you know, bump him up in the ice time. So, um, you know, that's another part of this this data file. But, um, yeah, so absolutely insane total just to look at all of this. Look at some of the guys that he's ahead of in the second half. Pat Kane, Barkoff, Yossi, Kucherov, Dreisaitl, Connor, Panarin, Forsberg. It just nuts, absolutely nuts that this is, you know, it's basically Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But what about the year before that? So 2021 Kevin Fiala, um, not quite as prolific in the second half in terms of his point per game numbers. In point per game number, he was uh, 20, 20th. So this is because uh, there's two up at the top here. So uh, 20th, he was 24th in total point uh, rankings. So still... If you're again, if your fantasy draft was in the middle of the season, he's still a second round pick, uh, maybe a borderline third round pick. But um, second half Fiala, um, you know, the first season he had a, a difference uh, between first and second half of 0.51. For this year, for 2021, the difference wasn't quite as high, but he still managed a 0.48 differential between first half Fiala and second half Fiala. So you still got the basically the same type of thing where he was not basically not ownable at a 0 0.56 point per game average in the first half. And then he was very good in the second half. I don't want to say, you know, one of the most dominant players cuz I mean just just can we just stop stop for a second and look at Connor McDavid at over 2 points per game in the back half of the 2021 season. That is something you will likely never see again in your lifetime, um, unless they drastically continue to change the rules. But regardless, Kevin Fiala, about half that <laughs> at 1.04 is still really good. It's it's 20 in the in the league in terms of a point per game uh, rating. So he's still, you know, killed it in the second half. And if again, if your draft was in the middle of the season, he's a second rounder. But, um, you know, some of the other things that, that are baked in here, look at the goals. So nine goals in 25 games, 11 goals in 25 games. So a slight increase there, but look at the assists, 10 more assists in the back half of the season. That was a marked difference from first half to second half. It's also worth noting that in 2021, his power play points per game average was that 0.28, right around that 0.3 mark. 
which would have been 20 power play points in a full season. And he ended up with 14 because uh, he didn't play all 82 games and obviously it was a shortened season. Um, so, yeah, he would have been uh, 23 power play point per game pace over 82 games, uh, just given that level of production. And then in, ad in addition to that, his shot per game numbers were even higher than they were this past year. So he was at 3.24 uh, for this 2021 season. So even better than what you got last year. Now, I don't necessarily think he's going to regress. Um, and we'll get into the LA file in a couple of, of slides here, but um, you are getting pretty decent category coverage, but you're only getting that in the second half. So you're starting to get the picture here that first half Fiala, especially this year was borderline unownable, if not completely unownable. And then second half, Fiala was really good, probably one of the top 20 or 25 guys in the league for the second half. Obviously, your fantasy playoffs are in the second half of the season, so that might be something that you want to keep in the back of your mind. And now you're probably saying to yourself, gee, data draft, I get it. Can it possibly get any better than that? So let's look at 1920. And as we look at the data, it actually doesn't get better. But... The trend does continue. So first half Fiala, 30 games played, 8 goals, 12 assists, 20 points, .666 average. So nothing crazy there. Um, in fact, that's, you know, that's maybe ownable, but not crazy. Second half Fiala, 34 games, 34 points, so one point per game. Um, and he was 27th uh, in terms of total point rankings. So... Um, the difference isn't as great. So the first year, the difference was 0.51 between first and second half Fiala. The second year, it was 0.48. The third year, it's 0.33, um, which for any other player would be st statistically significant and would definitely sound some alarm bells. But for Kevin Fiala, it's just another season. Um, so the increase in goal per game production goes from 0.266 to 0.441. That's a 40 goal pace in the back half and an increase in assists per game from 0.4 to 0.55. And he started establishing that power play production that you would then follow up later in 2021, that 0.28 power play point per game. Um, and he had 18 power play points that year. The only negative aspect to this file is his shot per game numbers hadn't climbed above the three uh, shot per game mark yet. So in 1920, he was still at a 2.73, but that was a massive jump from the two or so shots per game that he was putting up the year before this. So he was trending in the right direction. He just didn't hit that three shot per game number yet. Um, but that again, that was three years ago by now. So he is probably a three shot per game guy now, um, but it was not in the top 10th percentile as he was in the other two seasons that we looked at. So both of those uh, shot per game numbers were top 10th percentile. So as we can see from this data, Kevin Fiala is the undisputed king of the second half bump. But what about this year? What do you do with Fiala this year? So as we look at some of the data, um, last year, obviously, Fiala played for the Minnesota Wild, who were fifth in the league in goals per game with 3.72. And now he's headed to the 20th place LA Kings, who put up 2.87 uh, goals per game. So a drop of 0.85 goals per game. Now that's definitely going to hurt his production uh, overall. Now narrative wise, there is some hope for Fiala because he could be playing higher in the lineup. He could be playing with Kopitar and Kempe on the first line, or maybe he slots in on that second line with Deneau and Trevor Moore, who both had good seasons last year. But um, I, last I checked, Grunstrom was on that line and he did not have as good of a season. So Fiala playing with them would probably factor into I don't know about a bump in Fiala's production, but maybe he could maintain some of that pace. Um, but, you know, you add to that the possibility that he gets uh, a little bit of time with one of their young high-end prospects, maybe Byfield or Kupari or Kaliev. And there is some hope there that he won't, as gress, uh, won't regress as bad as I expect. Um, but according to the data, Fiala may not have much to work with in terms of setting up guys for goals because the Kings were dead last in the league last year in shooting percentage and fifth in total shot volume. So they shot a ton and they got nothing out of it. That's not a good formula. And that basically signals that he doesn't have any snipers to play with. Um, it should signal that they are due for a slight bump in shooting percentage because you can't possibly do that again, right? But 
it doesn't necessarily signal that he's going to start racking up assists now because he's playing with better players. And then you add to that, LA was the 27th uh, ranked power play in the league last year. Their power play percentage was 16-13, which is pretty awful, considering they were only better than Jersey, Seattle, Arizona, Montreal, and Philly. I could definitely see Fiala helping their power play a bit, but for them to become a top half power play in the league, there would need to be some serious magic right off the bat. And that brings me to the conclusion here. So I haven't had enough free time to tackle the money bags video yet, but that will be coming out in the, the next couple days or weeks um, if I can find some time over the weekend. But the premise is essentially that when players sign a large contract, they are less incentivized to put up career numbers in the regular season. And as you may know, Fiala just signed a seven-year $55 million deal with an AAV of 7.875. So that may come into play. When you add to that the fact that he's maybe not the slowest starter in the league, but definitely the hottest finisher in the league, and the fact that he now has to find new line mates to work with, carve out a role on that power play, move halfway across the country and buy a home in one of the worst housing markets in the world, it becomes clear to me that he will absolutely regress this season, if only for the first half. Now, as a bonus, before I conclude this video, I wanted to give you that quality insight that you've come to expect here so here it is. The exact halfway point for the LA Kings this season is January 5th, 2023. So here's the play. If you want access to second half Fiala, the play here is not to draft him at all. Wait until around Christmas time or the new year and grab him off waivers. Now, if he doesn't hit waivers, you could probably trade for him because you're going to draft for higher value than a guy like Kevin Fiala and whoever you pick in the first half will more than likely outpace Fiala. So then if you, in a worst case scenario, you trade for Fiala around Christmas, around New Year's, and at that point, if you can do that, you've just added a second round talent to your team off the waiver wire for the second half of your season and into the fantasy playoffs, and that could put you over the top and give you the production you need to win your league. So that's the play. The play is maybe don't draft Kevin Fiala this year. But that doesn't mean you don't want him on your team. You just need to get him around Christmas, New Year's, or at the very latest, early January in 2023. So hopefully you guys like this format for uh, this particular video. If you do, I'll start doing some other uh, fantasy files and looking at some specific players uh, that the data kind of signals out that they're a little bit different or a little wonky like this one uh, it was a crazy file. Um, had a lot of fun making this because there was some absolute insanity uh, in this player's difference between first and second half. Um, but yeah, if you like this, give me a, a you know a comment and let me know uh, that you did like it. If you didn't, leave me a comment, whatever. Um, I like to, to you know kind of pick for ideas in the comments section as you've noticed. Uh, so your comment may result in a future video if you uh, if you have a good idea for one. But again, I want to thank you for paying attention and watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one.